The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Albany County News. I'm Mary Rosak, the Director of Communications for Albany County. And in the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to hear about uh, two very different but very similar Chambers of Commerce. Joining me today, we have the uh, brand new, I think we could still say brand new, uh, President of the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce, Maureen McGinnis. Welcome. Thank you. And the not so new, but we have some years behind us. Yeah, some years, years behind us. From from the Gilderland Chamber, the President and CEO Michelle Viola Strait. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome, ladies. So, you know, when people think of the Chamber of Commerce, the first thing that comes to mind, they, I, I know they think of is business. Mm -hmm. But that's where it starts, and that's where it ends. Who wants to jump in and start with what? What really is a Chamber of Commerce? Take it away. Um, I think that uh, chambers are connectors. Um, we facilitate um, making connections for our community. So uh, last week I was with the superintendent of schools mm -hmm. um, talking about what we could do for the school district. Um, we're you know, facilitating in internships for them, um, also helping parents understand what the future holds for their children. Um, we're also highly involved in different um, activities to make our community um, livable. Um, we want to make sure that Bethlehem is a great place to live, uh, to work, and for other people in the capital region to visit. So we have a variety of different community activities. We have Bethlehem First Night. So you wouldn't necessarily think maybe that a, a chamber and businesses would be concerned about what do you do on New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. but we do. Um, so that, that kind of connector and, and who do you know and how do I get to do this? Um, the phone rang last week and someone called up and they wanted to know, well, how do I go about you know finding a career in this? And we pointed them in the right direction for doing their research mm -hmm. um, for career finding. So in a lot of ways, we just help connect people to information that they need. Sure, you know, Michelle, I know when, um, when Maureen's talking about connecting people, you've connected and, and we have worked with Gilderland in the Chamber with you um, on a lot of things, everything from from veterans to to business events to every. Can you, let's talk about that connection. That we are basically a conduit for everything in the community, and uh, the, our community has been so welcoming. We came up with so many different plans, so many different ideas, um, and the businesses were all into it. Uh, one of the first projects that was a little bit different than the ordinary were, was the batter project. So here we live in a town where it's very veteran friendly, and there's flags everywhere, and everybody is so supportive, yet in our town we didn't have any veteran flags. Mm -hmm. So great way, great opportunity to start molding the folks together. So we brought together the businesses in the area to sponsor them. Uh, they sponsored the banners. I had one business come in and wrote me a check for three banners and said, here, go find three veterans. And this was a person that really doesn't get involved in things, but saw this and instantly saw what was behind it and said, I'll get behind it. So the town, it was us, the town, and a few veteran organizations that we worked together and we put together 28 banners. The 28 banners, 24 of them were sponsored by businesses. And it's a win-win. Now you have folks that are posing under the banners that um, you have, the banners are everywhere in the mm -hmm. town. It became a, a spot for everybody to go and look. No, it, start, it started in, in Telesantha Park. Correct. Right? And then I know that we've had the banners at Crossgates Mall. Yeah. And the banners. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And that's the fun part. So the ones at Crossgates have been interesting because they have people taking pictures with them and sending it to me. So I'll go on Facebook or on uh, Instagram and I see, you know, there's my son's friends standing under his banner saying, hey, pointing to the banner saying, hey, I went to go visit Christian. So the banners really got so much exposure and so many people involved. And that, I think, just that just brought us into so many other areas. They've been 
so supportive. So along with that, we brought in the Vietnam Wall, and uh, that was a major undertaking, but the support in the community was just unbelievable. So we're looking to do it again this year, not the wall, but definitely the banners, and we'll be placing them around. Uh, this year it's going to be super cool because the Gildland PBA wants to get involved, and we have quite a few uh, police officers that are veterans uh, that have served and uh, have very interesting pasts, and we are going to be putting a few of them right outside a town hall. So we'll have businesses sponsor them and community partnerships. So for us, the chamber really is a conduit for everything. Mm -hmm. You come up with an idea, and we'll run with it. And, and, I, and I know recently for the holiday season, I know once again, you were doing things, the chamber was doing things uh, for families. So That was a major undertaking. We do the Chamber Angels every year. I want to say it's been probably maybe 15 years. So we go to the school nurses and the social workers for Gilman Schools and have them identify anonymously uh, three to four families per school. We then give them a list and we have the family fill out the list. So age of the child, gender, and what would they like. The lists are so humbling. It's, you know, uh, we had one child, the parent wrote down that they were uh, in a wheelchair, so they wanted arts and crafts that they could do in their wheelchair. Uh, some were, some children had um, sensory, wanted sensory toys, were, were on the spectrum in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, underwear, socks, shoes, you name it, and those were the lists, and maybe a toy here and there, but it was mostly necessities. So this year alone, we filled 350 presents, and it's 350 individual presents. Each child wrote down a list, their sizes, their what they wanted, how you know what characters they liked, and we bought for the entire family. So the day of the event, we started this maybe about six weeks ago. The angels are handed out throughout the community. Um, PPA, again, gave us a very generous sponsorship for that. So we had a few businesses sponsor whole families, and then we had people walking in that, again, no relationship mm -hmm. with the chamber at all, residents, saying, you know, I would love to adopt some angels. They take the angel card, they buy the present, they wrap it, and then they put it right on the present and give it back to us. Uh, so last Friday was delivery day, and it was controlled chaos, is the best I could say. Mm -hmm. um, one of our police officers took both schools, and we filled his car. I can't, you couldn't put a Q-tip in it. It was unbelievable. Wow. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. That is terrific. You know, when we think about um, chambers, we don't necessarily think about that. We don't think about how businesses and community, you know, how that all in, in, intertwines. Maureen, I want to talk a little bit about your background, because while you may be new to the Bethlehem Chamber, you're not new to the Chamber system. I want to talk about what's different for you because you were with the Rensselaer County Chamber. How is a county chamber different than, than what you're doing now with the town? So the, um, the Rensselaer County Regional Chamber was the only chamber in Rensselaer County and you know certainly covered a lot more territory. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes it different. Um, you know we had urban and rural um, in in that office that we were meeting the needs of. And now I'm in a small town chamber. Um, there's, there's similarities though, because Bethlehem has a unique um, feel. There's different neighborhoods and um, you know, you have to make sure you're giving love to each mm -hmm. part of your chamber, and it's like being a mom. And you, you know, you don't have favorites. You, you love all your children uniquely. Um, so, um, but in in this chamber, it really is the small business um, that that the attention is given to. And what do the small businesses that have you know ten employees or less? What do they need? What are the what are their priorities? So what do small businesses need? I mean, particularly during the holiday season. I mean, we we know about um, you know the the special uh, shop local on Saturday where the attention is is brought uh, right after Thanksgiving to you know we're all going out and shopping for the holiday season and and let's shop local. What do small businesses truly need from us? Well, I think um, from, from my office, they need the communication whenever there's changes in legislation. Mm -hmm. So what do they need to know that you know, maybe they don't have the, the time to read in depth, okay, this legislation has changed and what do I need to know? Um, they need assistance with the training. Um, they need um, 
opportunities to train their employees low cost. So we're providing them with those opportunities to get the sexual harassment training and to understand what's happening with um, the on-call employee. Um, but we constantly throughout the year remind people to shop local and I think that that's one of the things that make um, Bethlehem a great community because we have the type of people who move to the community because they want that unique local hometown feel with unique um, businesses and, and restaurants. Um, so just that, that idea that we are always promoting shop local. Um, they need a voice to advocate for them that um, with the, the uh, government that that maybe some of these ideas of different legislation um, can hurt local business, uh, small business, and small business really does play a tremendous role in our economy. Um, so we, it's our job as chambers to advocate for them and and to be the ones who go out and. Uh, speak on their behalf because they're busy minding the shop. They can't mm -hmm. go down to the legislature. Do you have an organized um, group, you know, with with uh, joining with uh, Gilderland and joining with the Capital Region Chamber and Colony? Do you all get together and go down to Albany to lobby or advocate for certain things? Is there something like that? Or are you doing it individually? Or Well, is, the Business Council um, okay. really um, collects information okay. and um, I'm still new to the Albany County end, so I can't really um, say what happens on the Albany County end, but I know the Business Council um, has been collecting information and, and relaying it on a lot of the issues. Perhaps you'd like to... With us, it's more uh, um, state and it's more local. Mm -hmm. So all of the Albany County legislators, we have great relationships with. So um, I speak with a few of the other chambers. We we are always connecting in one way, shape, or form. So when sure. there is let's let's talk about that because because there are many chambers, but there are but you you all have so have a synergy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We have great relationships. We really do. Um, so every chamber has a different dynamic and a different feel to it. So I encourage folks to join multiple chambers, mm -hmm. but make sure you use them. Just don't, you know, join and say, okay, I joined and now I'm done. Use it. Work it. You know, go to events. Get involved. Come out and meet people. That's that's how you're going to get the most out of your chamber membership. Uh, we have, we are doing actually a few joint events coming up. Uh, Speed networking event, which is great for, it's great to maintain your chamber itself and addressing the needs for the folks in your community, but it is also fantastic to network with others. Uh, so we are putting together a networking event. We're doing one in January and one in September with us, Bethlehem, and Colony. Um, it's a great way for all of these folks to connect, do their 30-second elevator speech super early in the morning, and meet new people and cross, make that crossover. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's something that our chamber, maybe there's something you would benefit from from our chamber, or maybe my member might live in Bethlehem. Well, then maybe you should you should be part be a part of every part of the community. So the relationships we have are fantastic. We just did a joint opening for Luciano's Wine mm -hmm. and Liquor, and uh, it was us and the Capital Region Chamber, and they came in very professional. Thank you so much for allowing us to come to the ribbon cutting and. You know, it's great to be working with you and the town. So there, there, it, it's. We have very, very positive relationships with everybody. So lots of ribbon cuttings, which always means good things because that means business is, is people people think it is viable right. to do business in mm -hmm. in our communities. I mean, when you look at your slate, I know you're still looking at the calendars for 2019, but you know, are there a, a number of ribbon cuttings, grand openings, and things that you see on the horizon still as we get into the new year? Oh, definitely. Yes. Yep. What um, you talked about the thirty-second elevator speech. Mm -hmm. How many times do do you run into someone that doesn't have that thirty-second elevator speech ready? You know, it's true, and you need it. You really do because it's nice, and it's it, the fun part of that is is the more people that you meet and the more people that you do it with. 
you become more powerful at it. So you start off where you, you know, you add a lot of extra things and you, you ask personal questions and you try to get a feel. By the end of the first 10 minutes, you realize, like, I, re I don't have a lot of time because the bell's going off and I didn't even get to ask you what you do yet, but we're sitting here having a great conversation. So after about the first 10, 15 minutes, you really do get it. And it is very powerful. You sure. could meet people and not know what they do because they don't deliver it. They don't bring it to you. So it's not an aggressive approach. It's a very direct approach. You know, you're in business. I'm in business. How can we do business together? What do you need from me? What do I need from you? And with some people, that works very well. I am talking with Michelle Viola Strait from the uh, Gilderland Chamber and Maureen McGinnis from the Bethlehem Chamber. Maureen, let's talk a little bit about how you got to doing what, what you're doing today. Um, you know, a little bit about your background. Um, your dad worked for GE and yeah. you, a little bit of a non conventional kind of route, I, th I think, to, uh, to the chamber. Tell right. us a little bit about that. So, um, I was in the sixth grade when my father decided to start his own business. Mm -hmm. And so, any day that uh, we had off, it was all hands on deck. You went to work with dad and you did whatever needed to be done, if it was filing, data entry, that kind of thing. So I grew up um, working for my father's business all through high school and college. And then when I got out of school, before I started um, my first full-time job, real job, I filled in uh, for my dad uh, managing an off-site contract. And it was two shifts of people. Um, uh, doing a, uh, a document image scanning station. And uh, we had people who were coming off social services or displaced um, home, uh, displaced home care, home workers. And uh, we gave them job skills and we gave them incentives uh, to keep them working and not going back on social services. So that was a lot for a 22 year old to sure. do. Um, but I, you know, I really respect my father and what he was doing, and uh, that's when I got my first taste of workforce development. So that that was always with me. Throughout my career, I um, worked with various not-for-profits, uh, and I belonged to chambers. Uh, and I had the opportunity to go work for a chamber, and my I took with me that workforce development um, aspect. So. That's kind of a, a key part, I think, of chamber work. Um, certainly across the country, chambers are doing a lot with workforce development. And what we're doing you know, in, in this part of the country is looking at the K-12 aspect of workforce development. Um, what, what exactly is that? You know, what, what are we doing with um, students as far as career exploration and helping them to know what exists in their own backyard? Um, there's not enough talent in this area. You know, there's 11,000 open manufacturing positions. We don't have enough computer programmers. Um, what do we do? So we're spending a lot of time trying to recruit people to come here. But what would happen if the people who grew up here stayed here? So starting, you know, working with the public school districts in the area and helping the teachers and the guidance counselors know about the careers that exist here, giving students a hands-on opportunity to experience some of those careers so that they know that there's more than just those flashcard jobs that exist. That, that sounds like a great plan. Sounds like something that takes many, many, many years yes. to build to. Mm. So how do you go about making sure though that when you're working with this with the schools and saying this is what's out there, how do we know that they're actually getting the skills and the training and the education they need to fill fulfill like the manufacturing on this end? So um one of the things that we did in Rensselaer County, and I hope to bring to my position here, is we would have the teachers um, interact with the business leaders and um, talk about that on a regular basis. So they would come together, and you know, the businesses would say, "Well, I, you know, I'm finding that my new hires aren't able to do this. Um, what are you doing in the classroom?" And they would have these great conversations about it. Also, we would have the business leaders say, "I'm available." you know, to FaceTime into your classroom and we'll work on some real life problems. So when I met with the superintendent of Bethlehem, we started talking about how are we gonna set this up so that, you know, if you have an engineering class working on bridge building, we'll have an engineer FaceTime in and look at their actual projects. Also taking students into these classes, or into the businesses where they're working on these things and letting them 
experience it. Um, so those are all like exciting opportunities. And then also having the teachers have experiences where they can go and actually spend some time in those professional settings, um, like kind of an externship for them to just like a refresher. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking, you know, the 11,000 manufacturing, you know, openings that we have that we can't fill. I want to talk to you, Michelle, do you hear, are you hearing from, from businesses too? I mean, I know it's a time of year when there's a lot of part-time mm -hmm. seasonal, seasonal kind of issues, but do you hear on a regular basis from, from your membership that, you know, you need, we need some more different kinds of skilled laborers, skilled workers, different educational levels than we are retaining here? We actually, just last week, we have the, in the town of Gilliland, we have the Northeastern Industrial Park. Uh, which is a huge facility that is in the middle of Gilvlin Center, right down the road from the high school. Um, you pass it a million times a day, but nobody, nobody ever knows, well, yeah, goes in is. there. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I had met a gentleman on a Toys for Tots run that said he owned a business in Gilvlin. So I said I would love to come out and see you. He told me he's in the industrial park. So I went out last Friday to visit him, and this it blew me away, this business. When you go in there, the, it the amount of in large industries in there are huge. Worldwide companies, national companies that ship all over the world yet are in this little tiny pocket in this little tiny town and nobody even knows that they're there. You see the trucks come in and out yep. but that's about it. So this one gentleman, he started the business about 15 years ago. It's called Inova and they make furniture for um, like specific needs. It's space saving type of thing. So right now they're doing a job. One of their biggest contractors is Disney. Uh, they're making these, they make these beds, they're kind of like Murphy beds, okay. where it is a closet, and then it has a table and chairs. You pull down the wall, and out comes a 16-inch huge mattress. It's very comfortable, not like the typical old Murphy bed where you, you have the bar on your back. Mm -hmm. Luxurious product, great products, space saving, so mm -hmm. like cruise ships, Disney, places where you don't have a lot of room but you want to maximize your room. Sure. So this company alone does over $20 million a year in sales. Hmm. They're huge. You would never know that they were even in there. So this gentleman works in the town, resides in the town. He has two young children that are going to be going to school in the town. And one of the, the, one of the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest part of the conversation, he had gone into, I love it here. Uh, it is, it, I can make money. Uh, my rent is not killing me. Uh, I have workforce here. He says, I never want to leave this town. He goes, I would love to take over the entire industrial park. Hmm. Uh, that would be my plan. Wow. But And here you hear so many people complaining about about taxes and New York, New York State, and, and how you could be, you know, you could make more money somewhere else. And this gentleman said, I absolutely love it here. I would never move. I have the best life. My family's going to have the best life. So that's a local business, but not necessarily a small business. No. So when you have someone like that, and I'm assuming that you're, that you're recruiting that gentleman for, for membership in that, that company, what, do, what does the, the, that kind of business maybe have in common with a, a smaller business, a, a mom and pop? It's very, very similar. It really is. It's the same thing. You have workforce challenge where... Um, where do you find your folks? So their biggest hurdle was finding people that were employable. Um, they would have folks come in and they're not on a bus line. Uh, they don't, you, we don't have any way of getting them out there. It's too expensive to Uber them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the biggest challenges. So as you drive through, you enter the industrial park and there are pop-up signs in the ground all over the place. Drivers, $25, $25 for this. And all these jobs, they're just posted down the line. So as you drive through, it's the same thing when you talk about if you owned a small deli and you need somebody to work the 6 a.m. to 12 shift, it's the same hurdles. You have to. You have the same laws. You have the same rules. Same regulations. It's just one is much larger than the other. But you still have the same thing. You have payroll. You have QuickBooks. You have um, fi business finance. It's it's mirrored the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that was an interesting conversation that I've had a lot with businesses is what is a small business. So um, I worked with one business who had 120 employees, but he insisted he was a small business because he knew all 120 employees. Oh, wow. And okay. he knew 
their family names and who had a pet and who had children and he was a small business. Mm. There was another gentleman who had 10 employees, but based on his revenue, he insisted he was a big business. So I think, um, you know, there's attitude, there's um, a chamber membership in doing business um, in New York State is a community um, feel. So um, the furniture company has the same stake in the game as a deli in that they're both invested in the town of Gilderland. Um, they both need Gilderland to have good schools. They both need Gilderland to have good infrastructure mm -hmm. um, in order for their business to succeed. Uh, and it, you know, it's the same in any of our municipalities. So it's mm -hmm. the commonality. We're, we're quickly winding down. I'm going to give you about a, a, a minute or so um, each to talk about vision for 2019 in, an, in a nutshell. I'll start with you, Michelle. It is going to be a very, very strong year this year. Uh, the, today, I sat with the staff uh, at Crossgates, and we're putting together a marketing plan for the year, getting everything that we want on paper, start getting some dates, and uh, my vision for this year is to continue to build new relationships with everybody in the community, um, expose people to more, give them more options and more um, uh, more abilities to meet and connect with folks. Uh, so creating more events that might be a little bit different, a little out of the ordinary, not doing the typical quote unquote mixers where you stand there with a name tag and, and you wait for the two hours and you go home. So we're looking to do more community involvement and really to get more involved with hands-on projects in the town and in the area. Our business owners are looking for new, they're looking for fresh, so I see this is going to be a great year for things that are just going to be a little bit different. What about you, Maureen? New and fresh are two words that I'm going to borrow mm -hmm. from Michelle. Um, we are refreshing um, our communication, so we'll have a different newsletter, e-newsletter. Starting in January, the website is being refreshed, and our programming is also being refreshed. Uh, we're putting the emphasis on our members and what our members' needs are. We ha we're rolling out some programs that will save them money and will also help them with uh, their uh, training costs for new employees. Uh, the focus is on members and communication. Okay, wonderful. Well, that, I'm looking at the time and that, that was great. You guys kept right within the time frame, so that's perfect, perfect. If uh, people want to find out more, I know for the Gilderland Chamber, they can go to um, gilderlandchamber.com. That's Bethlehemchamber.com for more about from Bethlehem. And it was a pleasure. This went by so quickly. I'm going to have to have you ladies back again maybe six yeah. months from now, and we'll Sounds talk about how, how things are, uh, are shaping up and uh, look towards the end of the year. Great. Thank you for having us. So thank, thank you. you. Michelle uh, Viola Strait, President and CEO of the Gilderland Chamber of Commerce, and Maureen McGinnis, the President of the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce. I'm Mary Rozak. This has been Albany County News. I hope to see you again soon.